let's discuss the problems on skewness. We are discussing the third unit of business statistics, which is based on skewness. So let's start it with the understanding of skewness. We have already explained the skewness and the types of skewness in the previous lecture. And in this lecture, we are going to study some problems based on the types of skewness. What is skewness is? Skewness is actually a quantification of the data that shows you the asymmetry in the distribution. So it is a number which indicates that up to what extent this asymmetry exists, how the data is asymmetrical, what is the asymmetry in the distribution of the data. So let's have a look towards the categories or the types of skewness, which we have already understood. Skewness is asymmetry in the data. That means a distribution in which the values are equidistant from the mean. That means we are talking about the symmetric distribution, where the distribution of the values is at the equi equal distance from the mean value. And that always shows you when the values are having equal distribution uh, throughout the mean. At that time, we can see that the distribution is called symmetric distribution. That time, time no skewness exists. So skewness occurs when this symmetric distribution change its form. That means some departure in the symmetry of the distribution occurs. That shows you the asymmetry. And that is called skewness. So skewness can be understood as the departure in the symmetry. And how we name this departure in the symmetry, how we categorize this skewness. The first is, as I said, it is based on the relationship between the mean, median, and mode. That means the three measures of central tendency. These three measures helps you to understand that how this uh, symmetric distribution change its form and how this positive and negative skewness occurs. So when the value of the mean is uh, equals to median and mode, that means when the three averages are equal in their values, at that time we will have a symmetric distribution. But when this form change, when these conditions get changed, that means when the value of the mean is greater than the value of the median and mode, at that time we will get a positive skewness or a positively skewed distribution. The next condition shows us that when the value of the mean is smallest comparing median and mode, at that time we will get we will get the distribution of negative skewness. So we have already explained it with the help of the graphs. Graphically, we have shown you that how this skewness, positive, negative, and left or right skewness exist and can be shown with, uh, by the distribution. So let's understand some problems which are based on these types of skewness. The first thing which we are saying is positive skewness. That means right, rightly skewed curve or right skewed distribution, right skewness. What is this right skewness is? The right skewness is, that means when you go through the chart or through the distribution of a positive skewness, you will see that the tail of the curve is extended towards right. It is going towards right. And that shows you that the distribution is showing a positive skewness. So let's have an example which is given here. Here, a scientist has 1,000 people. And those thousand people complete a, some, some psychological tests. Among those tests in the test file, the test scores shows a skewness of 2.0. So how the histo with the help of the histogram, how we will show this skewness in the distribution with the help of the graph using histogram. So here is the graph. In this graph, now look at carefully at the graph and try to understand that how we have plotted it and what it is actually telling. So the first thing is we have plotted the scores of the students and the frequency of the marks. So on the x-axis, we are having the test score of the fifth test. And on the left side, on the y-axis, you will see that we are having the frequency. So we have plotted our frequency distribution curve here with the help of histogram. So this is a histogram chart. And here you will see that the histogram, the shape of the curve is just like it is getting lower and lower and lower 
when you are moving it towards right. So it is continuing. That means the tail of the curve is towards, is larger and is moving towards right. The tail of the curve is larger and it is moving towards right. So as it is moving towards right, that is showing you the right skewness or we can say the positive skewness. Here the data taken is of uh, where n is 1000 people and the skewness which uh, by numerically when we solve, as I said that the uh, skewness is quantifiable, we can find out the skewness, how much the curve is skewing, is showing a skewness, we can calculate that. And uh, on calculation with the help of the formulas we have already studied, and we are also going to learn in the coming slides, we get the value of the skewness as 2.0. So let's learn how to do the calculations and uh, how to make a positive skewness curve. What this distribution curve showing? This histogram is showing a asymmetrical frequency distribution. We have already seen that, that it is, it is showing a asymmetrical frequency distribution, which, which is telling, which is uh, giving an information that most of the people have scored 20 points or lower, but the right tail stretches out to 90. And this distribution is therefore showing a right skewness that because the data is falling towards right. So this distribution is right skew. And if we move to the right along the x-axis, we go from 0 to 20 to 40 points and further. So towards the right of the graph, you will see the scores become more positive. More positive scores are there. So this kind of skewness is referred as right skewness and is a positive skewness. Let's understand the next thing related to this positive skewness and the type of skewness. That is the next category of skewness, which we called negative skewness. What this negative skewness is? This is also called left skewness, left skewed curve, left skewed distribution curve. So here, we have taken an example in which the, uh, the score on the test two turn out to have skewness. The, among the five tests, the, the test two is showing you the skewness of minus 1.0. When the records are taken, when the data is taken of, the, of the, that psychological test conducted on 1,000 people, we get the skewness as in the test two as minus 1.0. So how the data distribution looks, how we will see that this distribution, this skewness appears in the form of a curve. So again, with the help of this histogram, let's understand how to plot the curve of this and how the data showing skewness, that is negative. So let's move on to the distribution curve to understand it in a much better way. There is the graph, which is showing you that why we are saying that the skewness is negative or it is a left skewed curve. Again, you can see here that the, the data is of 1000 people. N shows you the number of people, that is 1000. The skewness comes out as minus 1.0, uh, which uh, we have calculated with the help of the formulas. And the graph is plotted as on the x-axis, we have taken the test score of the two second test. On the y-axis, we have taken the frequency of the distribution. So on plotting the graph by taking all the data together, we, we have got a curve which is showing that the tail of the data is extending towards right. It is moving towards right, sorry, it's moving towards left. The data distribution is continuously getting uh, in the form of the curve is the tail of the curve. You can see the tail of the curve is moving towards the negative or the left side. Towards the negative values, I can say that. So this curve is showing that the bulk of the scores are between 60 and 100 or so. However, the left tail is stretched out somewhat. That means you have seen that the left of the tail of the curve is stretched towards left. So this distribution is called left skewed because the tail is stretched towards 
left. So it is a left skew distribution. And right to the left, this is showing if we follow the x axis to the left, suppose we are search, uh, taking the x axis and we are moving on towards the left. So we move towards more negative scores. As I said, we will move towards more negative scores when we move to the left of the x axis. That is why we are saying that this is a left skewness or negative skewness. This was the absolute, we can say, categorization of the skewness. Now let's understand the calculation of some uh, relative measures that is coefficient of skewness. Yes, before that, we will understand the symmetrical distribution also. The symmetrical distribution, how we will understand the symmetrical distribution? We have studied positive, we have studied negative. Now we will understand how to plot the graph of a symmetrical distribution and what it reflects. So finally, a symmetrical distribution shows you the skewness zero. That means there is no skewness in the normal distribution or in the zero skewness curve. So the scores of the test three, among the five tests, in the test three, the scientists get the score as skewness 0 0.1. And that is showing near to zero. So we can say zero skewness. So for a symmetrical distribution curve, we must have the value of the skewness as zero. zero. So let's understand how to plot this, this curve how the curve of this uh, symmetrical distribution has been plotted. The data remains the same, but the shape of the curve got changed on the basis of the data recorded, on the basis of the scores of the third test. So here you can see the number of observations, yeah, the number of uh, uh, people are 1000, skewness is 0 0.1, and the, on the x-axis again, we have taken the test score of the third test. On the y-axis, we have plotted the frequencies. And when we have plotted the histogram of histogram chart of this distribution, of this uh, frequency distribution, we will see, we will see that the distribution is uh, representing or it is showing that the data is somewhere symmetrical in nature. That means if it is extended to the extending to the or a stretch to right, in the same manner it is a stretch to left. So it is showing the same pattern on both the sides. In the middle, you see the largest bars, the highest bars, having the heights more than the other histogram bars. So you will see that along the middle bars, the distribution of the data, the tail of the curve on both the right and the left side is moving in a symmetrical manner. The tail is stretching to right, and to the left in the in the same manner. So whenever we found it, whenever we find such kind of a distribution in the data, it actually reflects us that there is no skewness or zero skewness in the data. And this type of curve is called a symmetrical distribution curve. And the, another uh, way of identifying that whether the data is symmetrical or not is with the help of the mean, median, and mode values. That means if the value of the three measures are equal, that means that that distribution is a symmetrical distribution. And if the mean value is less than, it is less than the median and mode, that is showing negative skewness. If the mean value is greater than median and mode, that is showing positive skewness. So what is the formula we use to find out the skewness? As I said that it is quantifiable. So some formulas are there to find out the value of skewness. Here you will see that to compute the skewness, uh, uh, we use some on the basis of the population and the sample, we use the population skewness. We have written the population skewness because we have taken entire population as a, uh, for our data collection. So population skewness is the summation of what? The summation of xi, that means the data values and their subtraction from mean. And this is further divided by the standard deviation. And the cube of this multiplied by this, this summation multiplied by one upon n, that is 
frequency, the total of frequency. So this is the formula for finding the skewness. Let's understand some other methods of finding the skewness. In the next slide, we will understand. This xi in the formula given is individual score, u, that means the population mean, sigma, that is population standard deviation, and n is the population size. What are the main measures of skewness? Numerically, we put them in such a form. In the previous session, we have also already discussed all these formulas, which are related with the different coefficient of skewness, which we call relative measures of skewness. So let, let's understand all of them one by one. The first is Pearson's coefficient of skewness. When we take the difference from the mode, the second is Pearson's coefficient of skewness. When we take the difference from median, so the formula gets changed. The third is Cali's coefficient of skewness, where we use decais. The fourth is Wally's coefficient of skewness, where we used quartiles. And the last is moments based on coefficient of skewness. Let's understand each uh, uh, in an elaborate manner with the help of an example. The first is Carl Pearson's coefficient of skewness. We will study both the categories of it. Here we are having a problem where we are asked that compute the Carl Pearson's coefficient of observations from the following data. Here in the one column, you will see height is given. In the second column, you will see the number of persons are given. So the table for computing the mean of uh, mean and standard deviation, we have to make this table. So in the next slide, we will see how to make this table. Here you will see we have taken the first column is height. The second column is mean where we have taken the difference from uh, x minus mean of the data. We have calculated the mean of this data and we are finding out the difference. So these are the values which are called deviations and uh, the number of persons showing you the frequencies. And after finding these deviations, we will find out the value of fu and fu squared. When I have already explained you this by taking it as a small x, so the symbol we are using here is u, small u. So this is fu and fu square. That is multiplication of the frequency with the deviation and the squares of the deviation. So let's calculate the mean. After calculating all these, we get the value of the mean as, in the next slide we will show you what we get after calculating it mean as 61.4, standard deviation as 1.76. So let's use it to calculate our skewness. Mean we have calculated a standard deviation we have calculated, but we have not calculated mode. So we will calculate mode now. You will see here that we are having in the one column height as the class intervals and the number of persons as a frequency. So for mode, we need class intervals to uh, find out the value with the help of the formula of the mode, which we have studied in the first unit, that how to find the mode in the case of grouped frequency distribution. So we will use that formula here to find out the value of mode from this grouped frequency distribution. So let's move on to the next slide to understand that. The model loss we found is 60.5 uh, minus 61.5, that means we are having the lower limit, the delta one, the delta two. And after putting this in the formula of the mode, we will get the value of the mode as 61.13. I've already explained all the how to find the mode in the previous sessions. So we will use that formula here of the group frequency distribution to find out the value of the mode. And here we get the value of the mode as 61.13. Hence the Carl Pearson's coefficient of skewness using mode. That means here we find the difference of the uh, mean and mode to calculate the skewness. So this is the first Carl Pearson coefficient of skewness and the value we get is after finding the difference, we divide the difference by the standard deviation and the standard deviation is 1.76. So we get the value as 0 0.153. Thus, we will see that this value is positive so we can say this is a positively skewed distribution. This is the one way of finding the coefficient of skewness. Let's understand 
the next method of finding the coefficient of skewness. Next measures comes is as Bolli's measures of skewness. This measure is uh, actually based on the quartile values. This is based on quartiles. And for a symmetrical distribution, it is uh, seen that Q1 and Q2, Q3, these uh, Q1, Q4, Q3, all these are calculated to find out the value of this relative measure, which we call Bolli's coefficient of skewness, that is SQ. Right? So for this, we have to find out Q1, Q3, and Q4. So let's understand after calculating these values, we have to find out their difference from the given measure, from the given average we are having. Here is the formula, the relative measure of skewness known as Bolli's coefficient. Here you will see the formula of SQ, that is, in the numerator, we will write the difference of the third quartile and the median, which is then subtracted, which uh, from which we subtract the difference of the fourth, uh, the first quartile from the median. In the de denominator, you will see that we are having the difference of uh, median and the third quartile plus the difference of the median uh, and the first quartile. So Q1 and Q3, these two quartiles will be used. Here we, we are using two quartiles, that is Q1 and Q3, to find out the value of the Bolli's coefficient of skewness. So in the numerator, we get the value as on uh, solving the numerator and the denominator both. Finally, we get the formula of SQ as Q3 minus twice of median plus Q1 divided by difference of third quartile and the first quartile. So let's understand it by with the help of an example. Here is an example. We are having the same example as height is given in the form of class intervals, number of persons, that is frequency. So as we have to find the median to find out Bolli's coefficient of skewness, we need to frequency first. We knew that for median, it is always needed to find out the cumulative frequency. So first of all, what we have to do is, we just find out the cumulative frequency of the data. And uh, the way of finding the cumulative frequency is the uh, just adding on the succeeding frequency is given in the uh, frequency column. So after adding 10 to 18, we get 28, 28 to 30, we will get 58, 58 to 42, we get 100, 100 to 35, we will get 135 and so on. We will find the, all the cumulative frequencies. And after that, we will find the first thing which we do is to find out the value of the median. So let's understand. The first thing we are calculating is median first quartile and the third quartile. The computation of Q1. Q1 is since n by four, n by four that means the fourth quart, uh, the quartile. We are calculating the quartile. And n by four, we are using four instead of two. If we were using median, we have to use twice. But when we are talking about quartiles, at that time we have to use four. So the n by four value is giving 46.75. The first quartile class is 59.5 to 60.5. Thus, the LQ1 is 59.5, the lower limit, and uh, the cumulative frequency for that is 28. The FQ1 is 30, and the height, that is we call the difference, is 1. So we will find out the value of the quartile by using the formula of the quartile, which is just like median. We find out the value of the quartile and we get the value as 60.125. Computation of Q2, which we also call median. Median is also a second quartile or we can say median. So this is n by 2 and we use for, for median also we use n by 2. So we get 93.5 and the median class is 60.5 to 61.5. Thus, the lower limit is 60.5, C is 58, F is 42, and H is 1. H may be I here, 
we also represent uh, the interval as i or h. So this is the form the formula we used for median we have applied here, which we use for good frequency distribution, and we get the value of the median as 61.345. So this is the way we find out Q2 or MD. The third is Q3. For Q3, we have to use 3n by 4. We calculate for calculating the median size, we used to have 3n by 4. This is the way of finding Q3. And we get the value as 140.25. So the third quartile class is 62.5 to 63.5. Thus, the lower limit is 62.5, C is 135, and FQ is 28, and the height again 1. So the value of the third quartile we get is 62. This is 62.6. 688. Let's understand how to calculate Bolli's coefficient. The last thing which we have to do is we just need to put all these values in the coefficient in uh, the Bolli's coefficient is QNS formula. And after putting the values of Q3, uh, Q1, and MD, we get the value of Bolli's coefficient of QNS as 0.048. This is the value which we get after applying the formula of Bolli's so coefficient of skewness. So this was about Bolli's coefficient. Let's understand the last one that is Kelly's coefficient of skewness. <clears throat> Bolli's measures of skewness is actually based on the 50% of the observation. And why? Because it leaves 25% of the observation on each extreme of the distribution, on the extreme values of the distribution. So for uh, the purpose of some improvement in uh, Bolli's measures, Kelly suggested a measure which is based on percentiles. So the formula of the Kelly and uh, is actually contributing that it is not leaving the 10% of the observation which are ignored during Bolli's measures of skewness. So it is uh, taking into consideration the whole data for finding out the skewness. So it is using the percentile method or the percentiles for calculating skewness of the data. So let's have the, the formula of measures of skewness. The Kelly's coefficient of skewness is denoted by a symbol which we say SP. And this is YP, this P is showing you the percentile. Then this S P is the formula is that is we are having the difference of the percentiles first. So firstly, we will have to calculate the difference of the percentiles P90, P50, and P10. That means three percentiles we need to calculate. P90, first the difference of P90 and P50. The second is the difference of P50 and P10. And this difference is used in the denominator also. And we find out the formula as P90 minus twice of P50 plus P10 divided by the difference of the P90 and P10. This P90, which we have rep represented P90, and this P50, this P50 is called MD, which we call median. So the value of SP can be understood with the help of the table, which we use for with the help of an example, we will understand how to calculate. Firstly, we will calculate the P10. And the value of P10 is calculated as shown below, 10 times the N given divided by 100. So the N here is 187. So we divide this 187 uh, by 100, multiply by 10 and divided by 100. We get the 10th percentile, which lies in the class 58.5, 259.5. And thus, we get the value of LP. 90 and LP 50. So firstly, we will calculate P10. And this P10 is showing you the same formula which we have used uh, previously. We will apply here. And we will get P10 as 50, lower limit that is 58.5 plus the difference of the value we have pointed out of the P10 that is 18.7. And uh, we subtracted from the value of the C, that is 10, and we divided by frequency given, that is 18. 
and multiply by the class interval. So we will get P10 as 58.983. Let's understand how to calculate other percentiles. Now P90. For P90, we just multiply 90 by N and divided by 100. And the same method we will use to find out P90, where we will get LP90 as lower limit of the P90 as 63.5, C is 163. This all can be understood from the table. The table we are using to calculate all these coefficient of skewness. We will see all these values there. We will match all these values. We go to the table and we will find out that where these are written and how they are related. So you will have a better understanding when you uh, see your table along with this. So the value of P90 is 63.831. This is the value we get as P90. The last thing which we do is to put all these values of the percentiles in the formula of Kelly's coefficient of skewness. And after putting all these values, we get the Kelly's coefficient of skewness as 0 0.026, which is again showing you positive skewness. So the coefficient of uh, this can be considered as positive skewness. But as I said, if the data is, if the value is very near to zero, it is somewhat near to zero or zero. We can say it as a zero. It's a negligible value. So we can take it as that the skewness is zero here. There is approximately no skewness and the data is somewhat of symmetrical distribution. This is the way we can understand Kelly's coefficient of skewness.